figure it out. Let's go, or else you're not going to the NHL. Oh, oh go on, go on, go on, go! On. go on. Got Johnson. Oh, 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 Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we are going to be taking a look at the team that's going to represent Canada at the 2023-2024 World Junior Championships, this year being held, held out in Sweden. So with that being said, this team overall looks pretty good. I mean, they're not necessarily the most skilled of teams we've seen from Canada over the years, but they have sort of transitioned into that underdog sort of team where, you know, they have a lot of big guys, a lot of players that are going to be able to throw the body a little bit around. And especially when we look at the teams that they're going to be playing this year at this tournament, especially the teams that necessarily are going to be their high competition, you always look to the key candidates. You look at the U.S., you look at Finland, you look at Sweden. And this year especially, I'm looking at the team like the U.S., who this year, in my opinion, are probably one of the most skilled teams we've seen in in really the last probably five-ish years from the U.S. side. And one of the main reasons why Canada's done what they've done is that they can't compete this year with the U.S. in terms of skill, but where they do definitely have that advantage is in their size. And that's sort of the way Canada's made their team this year. And I think that's a really, really good idea for what Canada is able to do, especially when we look at what they're necessarily biggest strengths are it's their size it's their ability to play the puck so really to also throw around the body while still having that goal scoring ability it's not going to be a bad Canada team this year it's Canada they're always going to be good but it's just not necessarily the skilled teams you've seen in the past look at even last year you know you had a killer line with Bedard you had Fantilli just to name a couple and then you had all the NHL guys as well this year you get two NHL guys we'll touch on that a little bit later but with that being said let's break down the raw of who Canada is going to be representing this year. So we'll start off with the forwards, Owen Beck, Nate Danielson, Fraser Midden, Matthew Portois, Macklin Celebrini, Matthew Wood, Carson Rykoff, Owen Allard, Jordan Dumais, Matthew Savoy, Easton Cowan, Connor Geeky, Braden and Braden Yeager, the defensemen, Tristan Luneau, Jake Furlong, Noah Warren, Oliver Bonk, Tanner Molendijk, Maverick Lamoureau, Nathan Mateachuk, the goalie Scott Ratzlaff, Mathis Rousseau, and Samuel St. Hilaire will be the players representing Canada this year at the 2023-2024 World Junior Championships. So with that being said, this team, like I sort of mentioned off the top, it's not necessarily the most skilled of teams we've seen. Portois, obviously a late addition to the team. We made a reaction video to the actual team a little bit earlier. If you want to check that out, link will be down in the description below. But with that being said, this team is not probably going to do too bad at this turn in my opinion i'm looking probably first place obviously canadian fan here i have to say first place but really you're looking probably second place behind the u.s just in terms of where their skill level is in my opinion swedes will give them a little bit of run for their money i think finland will be up there too it is a killer group this year for canada when you have finland sweden germany and then you have latvia as well no offense to Latvia, but it is a really tough group for them to get out of. I wouldn't be surprised though. Latvia Germany is going to be a really, really good game. So definitely watch out for that one. We'll also have a full world junior preview coming up a little bit later this week, just before the juniors start. With that being said, sort of taking a look at the schedule for Canada this year. They will open up games on December 26th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time against Finland. The 27th, they'll play Latvia at 1.30 p.m. December 29th, they'll play at 1.30. December 31st will be 1.30 as well. And this is where it's sort of going to become interesting for Canada. Obviously, it'll depend on their seating, depending on where they rank within their group. But, with, but quarterfinals will start on January 2nd. Sem semifinals will start January 4th. Relegation will also be on that day. I highly doubt that Canada will be rele in the relegation round. This year it is important. One game relegation. Winner go home. Unlike last year, they had the best of three. January 5th is the bronze medal game at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. January 5th is also the gold medal game at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
So obviously a full schedule for Canada. I will remind everyone that it is in Sweden this year. So the games are going to be earlier, at least for us on the Canada side. So wake up early and enjoy. Obviously, it's going to be a good one. You can never go wrong with the World Juniors. And with that being said, I'll sort of throw up the lines here. This is who I'm sort of expecting to be playing alongside here. We got Celebrity, Portois, Dumay on the first. Cowan, Geeky, and Savoy. Get Geeky and Savoy, the two players who play on the Wentichi Wild together. I think that's a good idea. We've sort of seen that in the training camp as well. They're sort of sticking those two players together. I think it's a really good idea for Canada. You already get a little bit of line chemistry together. Great idea. Rykoff, Jaeger, and Wood. Minton, Beck, Danielson. I think that fourth line is going to be sort of more your defensive-minded line. I like sort of the, those three players together with the extra of Allard. Allard, I think, also could be someone who slides in nicely on that fourth line instead of Minton. I think the, either of those players could work well there. I think Beck is a really, really good player on that fourth line center role, as well as Danielson on that right side we've seen him ninth overall pick to the Detroit Red Wings in this past draft and I think when we look at that he's not necessarily your most offensive minded of players but he is pretty pretty solid in terms of his defensive role I think that's where he sort of fits in nicely on that fourth line Allard is also a similar minded player but I also think it's important especially for Canada to have a little bit of offensive touch and I think Fraser Minden will provide that for them as well as Owen Beck both those players are pretty good overall on the offensive side of the puck as well now onto the defense, Patechuk, Lamoureux, Furlong, Luno, Molendijk, and Bonk. All those players make a lot of sense to me. Furlong and Luno, I really like. Um, I think they could be a first line pair. Really, the thing with Canada this year, there's no really standout line. I like the Celebrini Portois Dume line. I think that's really your only necessarily like top top pair. Uh, Celebrini, obviously coming up into the draft this year, projected first overall. Think of it a lot like, you know, sort of a Bedard or a Wright, where you have him as he's coming in, there's a lot of expectations on him. You give him someone who's, you know, pretty solid overall with Portois, who's playing a center, Dume on the right side. I think that's really going to suit that team nicely. And I, I think when you look at that line, Celebrini's going to be able to play off of those two players. So I think really that's what you want to see from Canada. Uh, just in terms of their lines there uh, and the extra I have Warren once again these lines are not final final they're just my projected lines that's who I'd, I'd like to see play together if I was the coach that would be what I would be throwing out lastly Rousseau in, in my opinion should be the starter Rastlav St. Hilaire either of those two could play there's no real preference for me there but other than that Canada this year looks poised to make another deep run into the playoffs be sure to stay tuned lots of coverage will be being posted so make sure to like subscribe all that um, but lastly just one more thing about the world juniors big event a lot of spotlight Canada always has a lot of pressure on them to perform but this year I think it's a little bit less on them it's a lot more on the US this year to sort of pull it off to be able to make it a long way but never count out any of the sort of the you might want to call them minor teams because they seem to be doing a lot better last this year uh, especially as we've seen the years go on you look at last year Slovakia almost knocked out Canada in the quarterfinals and at this point in time it's anybody's game be sure to stay tuned the world juniors are now once again a competitive event anyone can take it so be sure to stay tuned but with that being said if you made it this far in the video thank you for watching if you'd like to drop a like if you really like to consider subscribing tell all your friends let me know down below your thoughts on the world junior team until next time see you